we are going to be talking about birthdays. I'm going to review Cocaine Bear, and we're going to talk about rad stuff. And now your host, Mike and Deglu. What is up? Team, welcome <laughs> oh, to Jesus. K and M Geekly. Just a sneak peek at mm-hmm. two old ass geeks talking about some of the things getting them through their week. And Keith, Ugh. let's rip the band aid off right away. Tell the good people yeah. out there, how old are you? Old enough. Old enough. Yeah. No. This wait, wait. Is, what's I, that? I'm... What's that? Hold on. That old Keith. It's uh, time. Yeah. For, yeah. For the good old life alert. I fall in and <laughs> I can't get up. <laughs> you gotta be careful getting out of bed. You could pull. You could pull an ass. <laughs> uh, yeah. You could pull an ass. Yes, yes. Uh, that is for damn sure. I mean, frequently I, I'm so often it's like, oh my god, like what did what happened? Like I sat, I sat while old. That was uh, the, yeah. the frequently a problem that I have. Yes. So. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was wondering because we were about to come on air, and it was just a black screen. I'm like, are, are we feeling? Are we feeling sad today, Mike? What's going on? But no, of course, I should have known. I no, should have. Great. Known. It was so hard. I wanted to text you on Saturday. Obviously, was your birthday birthday, but I said no. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna text him. I'm not gonna acknowledge the birthday until we do it for the patrons and for the internet because it's all that matters. It's. <laughs> Because I was wondering, like, oh God, Mike must be having a bad day. I'm like, what's going no. on? No man, poor guy. Like, I, I was, I was literally gonna. I couldn't care less about my birthday, but I was, I was gonna check in to make sure you were okay. <laughs> Listen, I wanted to say it. I'll say it right now at the top. We'll get it out of the way. So, you know, Keith and I have known each other for a really long time. We've we've expounded on that, uh, and we've been through a lot of a lot of good stuff, fun stuff. A lot of we've talked about a lot of deep stuff. You know, we have a pretty well rounded relationship. It's come to that. But I wrote this into a card to you, and I mean it. The, 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 the best compliment I can give you, aside from how much I admire you, and we've talked about that, is that when I think about you, when I think about our friendship, the things that come to mind the most are music and, but above that, fun, play. Mm. And, you know, all of the science, Keith, shows that to keep your sanity, to keep yourself young and chipper into your adulthood, into your later life, is to keep a sense of play. And the fact that we get to play so much on the internet is uh, and in person and, and, and have such a fun kind of jovial friendship as grown men is just so refreshing and so wonderful. I'm so thankful to know you, to have you in my life, Keith. Happy birthday. I know maybe not the best of all years, but I know great ones are on the way and I'm, I'm, I'm here for the ride, whatever you need, whenever you need it. Happy birthday. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, and I, I feel the same way. And I think that the uh, you know play, I think, is kind of our whole thing, yeah. right? Every show that we do is based on some tapping into some version of our twelve-year-old selves who's really excited about whatever. Mm-hmm. And I, I think as long as you still have access to that twelve-year, you know, whatever whatever age it was where you like really geeked out. Mm-hmm. about whatever it was that you, you know, G.I. Joe comic books or it's Star Trek or whatever it is. And you were like, you you would lie in bed and just like imagine whole worlds around it. And I think that, you know, in some ways, both of us have devoted our lives to chasing that sensation. In, in a lot of ways, like the addiction of that world that you create whether it's mm-hmm. theater, whether it's sports, whether it's whatever, that is so pure and beautiful. I, I, you know, I was talking about it with, with theater, right? That just chasing that feeling of theater is magic that I had, mm-hmm. you know, when I was a kid and always, always, always going for that. And so our whole brand, our, our, whole, our whole enterprise is about recapturing that moment. Now, of course, we do it as adults now with more critical eyes and more life experience, but that's still what we're hoping for. We're still trying to get to that. Yeah, and, um, and what's interesting is, well, the the therapy interest of it is that a lot of the things we chase, the feelings we chase, we know are ephemeral feelings, are ephemeral experiences, live theater, the feeling of, the, the, the indescribable, intangible feeling of holding that toy, of wanting that next thing. They're all ephemeral 
things that poof in the wind, and so you can't hold on to them. And yet, we're both two people who are s- searching for a sense of permanence. Well, which and and, and is, like a drug, yeah, it's never as strong as the first time you do it. Mm-hmm. But it is something that that's wor- that <laughs> as long as it's not a drug, it's worth chasing. Yeah, you know, just the yeah. aftertaste is. We're going to talk magical. about it with something a, a little bit later, Keith, but you bring up a really great point. And another counterpoint you offer to me, which I really appreciate, especially as an artist I, that I respect, is that, you know, I had a teacher once who said, be careful, because the second you start doing theater or whatever art is your art, professionally, yeah. it's difficult to take off the critical eye, which mm-hmm. can make you, and we talked about this last week, actually, can make you not a great person to be around if everything is a critique at all times. And it's hard, and, and sometimes you just want to enjoy it and watch and enjoy. Mm-hmm. And uh, often you remind me of that. Often my wife reminds me of that because I can't sometimes take off. The, I, the first thing I'm searching for is, well, what am I criti- What can I critique? And sometimes mm-hmm. you don't need to. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you remind me of that a lot, and I appreciate that. Well, I, I, think, it's, I think it's essential to do this long term, mm-hmm. right? I, I think everybody goes through, and we've talked about this before, but I think, I think everybody who aspires a, a career in showbiz in some fashion, right? Whether it's TV, film, or theater, or writing, or whatever it is, you, you start with your fanatical fan. It's, it's magic. I remember when I was a kid, like we would we'd go see a live production, even if it was community theater, right? I'd want to get there the minute the house opens so I can sit in the seat and look at the proscenium and smell the sparkle that is live theater, mm-hmm. right? So we start there. Then we we aspire to do it. We move to New York City. We go to college or we don't, whatever. We end up there. And then we immediately become like angry, bitter, bitchy, <laughs> critical yeah. little jerks. Uh-huh. Right. And everybody does it. It's a process. Everyone's like, oh, that's so bad. And they're so bad. And blah, 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 blah. and you you tear everything apart because you are feeling excluded by it. Mm-hmm. You know, you're you're trying to claw your way in and it's not letting you because it's an incredibly painfully difficult thing to do. And what do you do with all of that energy? It turns into bitterness. It turns into if I can't join them, I'll tear them down from a from a side. And that's sort of, you know, everybody does that. But the people who, A, become successful for the most part, and more importantly, the people who stick with it are able to wrestle that back Mm. and bring back the love of the theater and the support of it and and to start rooting for it again with, of course, your critical eye, with, of course, your your life and, and career experiences. But if you can dovetail those two, where I can analytically look at a thing and say, okay, this is what's working. This is what's not working. This is what I would do to fix it. I don't know how I would fix it there, but like I would, you know, like I can see deconstruct it as a, as a writer, as a performer, but still allow yourself the grace of the magic, Hmm. right? Then I think that is what is sustainable. That's how, that's how you can keep doing this for 20, 30, 40 years um, because those people who never escape that the bitterness, the bitchiness of it all, they're gone. Yeah, they're they're not still doing this in their forties. Mm-hmm. They're toast. They're gone. And um, the people who are able to reestablish a path through magic and gratitude are the ones who stick around. So I don't know what order we want to do this in. I, we have a couple of things we want to talk about pop culture wise, but also I want to give you the floor to talk just a little bit about what you did for your birthday. And I know some of you guys, a lot of you sent well wishes. Keith got them. Keith's feeling great. Uh, so I don't know. You have a couple boxes. Maybe we'll open up. Why don't we? Why don't we start with that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's 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 funny. Like uh, yeah, everybody's they had an interesting birthday this year um, okay. because everybody came out of the woodwork and was so supportive and so uh and so great and like like I've got a box to open I'm really excited about that and and yet I was like oh man I I, I struggled a little bit with my birthday mm-hmm. this year um not I, I don't think because of aging right because like yeah okay I'm 43 I'm you know I'm getting up there whatever I think just like I was texting this to my brother this morning I was like there's a part of me that it's not a surprise to anybody watching this. I love attention. Mm-hmm. Duh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hello. Have you met me? But I 
I don't love it when I don't feel like it's earned. Mm. And so I have a harder time with birthdays because I'm just like, why am I getting all of this? I didn't do anything other than exist for another year, which makes it a little bit more uncomfortable for me. Um, that said, everybody was incredibly supportive. Um, you know, uh, Jillian made me a cake and had a whole bunch of, um, speaking of 12 year olds, right? She bought me like a ridiculous Funfetti? amount of, oh yeah. I mean like that, but like she bought me like candy and like stupid sugar cereals and all the stupid stuff that I like. Um, and, and, but also just like so silly and fun. So, um, so that was, you know, incredibly supportive. May we all have a, a, an ex spouse who still makes you a birthday cake. Mm -hmm. Like, come on, that's first class. Um, yeah, so you know, did that and, and as far as divorces go, Keith, you're winning that. I mean, it's it, it's not fun, but it could be a heck of a lot worse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if, you, if you have to be in a, if you have to be in one, uh, yours is not a, not one of the worst to be in. I mean, I think I said this the other day. Like, if I could divorce just one person, it'd be my <laughs> wife. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down. That's good. That's a that's a that's a good one. I mean, she's amazing. <laughs> so. <laughs> Anyway, so so that's yeah. So all uh, all the various things I didn't really want. To, I wasn't really feeling up yeah, for I doing much of anything. Um, so we uh, we ate cake and watched Cocaine Bear, and I felt like that was. Uh, we'll talk about that later, but I felt like that was right up my jam. Uh, but I want to sincerely thank everybody who who reached out um, and sent well wishes, and um, I. I, I I sh will respond to everybody, but I, I really do appreciate it. Um, it. My discomfort aside, your support is profound. And Keith, this just in. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> oh my Happy God, it's Chancellor Janet Tucks. Happy birthday, Keith Vaughn. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> oh my God. You. Love you, Keith. Oh, love you too, Jed. Oh, and Tux. Happy birthday. I feel like he's yeah, going to you, slash me. What are you me. doing here? Don't you have a show? No, it's uh, Monday, Keith. You came all the way back? Just to say, no, no, no. From Connecticut for Monday? Cat can't stay. Okay. Uh, they have a, a weird schedule. They are all, they only run Thursday through Sunday. Now that's Oh. Working. Well, all right. Well, that's Keith handy. So uh, in case you, you, you weren't keeping up on the social medias, uh, Jen is in a phenomenal production of The Secret Garden out in Connecticut. Yeah, I'll, I'll mention that in, in a bit, but uh, let's not bury the lead here, Keith. Continue on. Let's. All let's, right. Yeah. He's so, thankful. So, he's got, but he I got guess presents I'm, too. I'm thankful. I am. I am grateful for everybody. Um, and uh, it's. It, I. I love our little family and our community here. And uh, and I've got a box to open. Really, really exciting. Which. Uh, is not is not uh, the the return address is not from JD, but JD has confirmed that it's from him. So Keith was uh, confused. He's like, "Did we get our first anthrax? <laughs> <laughs> How did they get my address?" Uh huh. We have uh, a like a a, spawn, a a toy company reached out. They they have a cool model. They want us to open, and and I for, had forgotten that I that it was coming so fast. And I got a box addressed to look at my Star Trek toys, and I was so confused. I was like, "You're like, oh my why? god, the IRS." Yeah, already. The IRS is is coming for our tens of dollars. <laughs> yeah, uh, they, guess what? They they want their piece. They don't care how small. No, fair enough. All right, hold on. I, I am just absolutely macerating this box. Should I go to Keith, I, Keith's one here? Do, does it still even work? <laughs> do do oh. I have a one? Oh, I do. All right, hold on. I uh, I did not bring any scissors or a knife, so this is this is going uh, about as well as you might expect. Trying to open up this box here. All right, hold on. Here we go. Only 72 more layers of tape. This is this is really good TV. Okay. We're close. We're close. I have a box. I have absolutely obliterated this box. And inside the box is... What's in the box? It's a dribble! Oh, <laughs> look at that. Oh, my God. It says, happy birthday, Keith. From JD, I'm gonna leave that right there. Oh my God, look at this! Hold on. So it is a keep away from food, pets, and kids. Uh, that's hilarious, dude. The tribbles have teeth. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. I'm also really glad that it's not breakable because my cat knocked it off the table like three times. Oh, look at that. That's really that's cool. That's fantastic. I am a hundred percent. This is this is going to go up on the shelf in a place of pride. 
Look at that. Thank you, JD. Really that cool. Is, that is fantastic. I I love it. And uh, Charlie's going to love it, even though they say keep it away from pets. Uh, that's hilarious. All right. Use extreme caution when feeding. Is not responsible for lost limbs. I love it. Oh, this is a mirror triple. That's why it has teeth. Oh, snap. Oh, I love that, that. What does that even mean, man? It's a mirror unit. It's e it's an evil triple. Oh. It's a mirror because, you know, it's like the dark triple. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm delighted. So, uh, all right. Well, what a what a fantastic finale for my birthday. Um, Keith, that, why is your yeah. face? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I blew up. I forget it. What, what's no happening attention. over there? Nothing. Pay no attention. Good lord! All right, uh, all right. Enough about me. Uh, Mike, Keith, what's also, going on? Uh, you've you've joined the uh, you've joined the Xbox Game Pass family. Have you oh, had yes, a chance I, to play with that? Yes, I should officially thank. So, so Mike's present to me this year was was his uh, was was his old Xbox, which was a my old much new more, Xbox. Your old new, which was a much bigger significant. It was much more significant upgrade than I thought it was. Because mm -hmm. once I put that in, because it is, it's like the it's the S. Mm -hmm. Which has uh, it's they're marketing up to 4K. it wrong. Yeah, they're marketing it as like the lesser of the new gen system, but it's not. It's like a full beast next gen system. It's it's phenomenal. I mean, like it's uh, wait, hold. On. I I haven't. Even, I need to look this up. But it's playing the next gen versions of the games, right? I mean, it's doing all. It's yeah. Yes. It's and and it's it's got the SSD. It's remarkable. Really, the biggest. It's just digital only. That's it. That's it. Doesn't have an optical drive. That's the thing. Oh, I don't think I fully clocked the extent of that. Yes. Yeah. It's the new one. <laughs> it's the. Uh, it's the, the I don't thing. Think I, holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was wondering, like, this is so much better. Like, this yeah, doesn't. Dude. It's the full. It's the full jam. Yeah. Dude, that's amazing. I mean. I've been I've been I've been playing it like 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 basically nonstop since I since I got it. It is really it's awesome. It's it's remarkably better. I can't believe how fast it is. Um, yeah, the SSD changes so many things. We have to. Uh, I have a whole. I I was just looking at. I, I've now been like sniffing out the newest chips on the PC. Like here's the thing about owning PCs that I've forgotten since I've been Mac guy for so long is you ha I I b built a beast of a PC right. But then yeah. after like three years, it's like, nah, yeah, nah, your CPU, my CPU that I spent $2,000, I didn't know, it was yeah. like, you know, 600 bucks for a AMD Ryzen 5 chip three years ago. They're yeah. like, it's the budget option now. That's yeah. now, I, and I'm like, well, how fat, what's now? And they're like, it's 13, Raptor Lake, Gen 13 Intel. And I was like, I can't. I can't do it, I, man. <laughs> it's tech. It's tech. But let but let me tell you what a phenomenal upgrade mm -hmm. that is. I'm not I'm having very... to wait. Like when you load a game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, for... no, we both froze for a second, but we're back. Yeah, yeah, we're back. And I'm I'm and here's here's the thing. Uh, if if you send me the console, most of the games I play are sports, mm -hmm. and most of the. Uh, and every one of the sports, I create custom players and teams, so you know, so I I can be my be myself, right? Because you know, right. again, twelve year old, what's a twelve year old going to do? He's going to make his whole team. So uh, if you create the system, you you make every team. Mm. So number fourteen, Mike and Deglio is actually the leadoff hitter of my baseball team. He's a uh, you 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 have the best uh, batting average. I'm very good at baseball, especially you're, virtual you're baseball. Yeah, yeah. So speaking of birthdays, I thought we'd talk about a couple of, I'd like to talk about a couple of things. Um, first thing, uh, yes, CEO Jen is, Chancellor Jen is in a production of The Secret Garden, which uh, is a bit of a birthday in its own right, because you had mentioned it earlier, the first touring production I ever saw live was The Secret Garden on its mm. on its national tour. I um, uh, Back in 90, what, would it have been 96, 97, something like that? Sounds on, about right. Yeah. Uh, and I remember it just being like, I remember really liking the music and I remember it being incredibly long and uh, long. Vocal. Yeah, that's what I remember. And so I haven't really heard much. You know, there's a couple of standout numbers from the score that you hear throughout the years and people sing in college and whatnot, but I hadn't seen a production since then. And so I, when I went to see Jen uh, do it this past weekend for her opening night, my expectation was long and boring. 
you know, but cheer on Jen. But I have to say that the fine folks over at ACT Connecticut, ACT Connecticut, which is in Ridgefield, Connecticut, not far from New York City. If you're on a Broadway excursion, it's only a hop, skip, and a jump up there. They run through June, I think. I am absolutely astounded by what a wonderful production. Uh, they put they rented an LED wall. They have a they have oh, they, cool. they had raised the money to install a turntable. Uh, so for a regional theater production, that's a pretty high powered. Uh, it is in, in, incredibly directed. It is fast paced. I will say I am interested that it won best book back in the Tonys back in the day because I find that the book takes so many shortcuts and removes such so many of the establishing the length of the book. I mean, it takes a long time to develop these relationships, goes with the whole growing yeah. analogy. It takes a while to wake up and to grow, <clears throat> marries the seed and kind of, we won't go into the plot. So, you know, you the know, thing is Wick. It's yeah, got a life about it. It's got a life about it. So anyway, I, I, I it, it, there's so much story that needs to be told, but what's great about The Secret Garden that I'd forgotten, and I'm so glad that Jen was there, is because it really utilizes the ensemble right? It's not just the principals telling the story. The ensemble, these, this sort of like collection of ghosts, for lack of a better term, of people from Mary's past, tell the story through song, a lot of, all through song. And uh, they've, they've, they've really put together a collection of incredible voices and great talent, and it is beautiful, and it is fast-paced, and, you know, Richfield is a very uh, wealthy community, and they raise a lot of money at that theater. And you know what? They don't put it in their pockets. They put it on the stage, and you can see the money. Uh, the The pit is amazing under the music direction of Brian Perry, Broadway veteran. Uh, Daniel Levine is the director. It sounds amazing. The mm. pit is amazing. The, the, the mix is amazing. The reverb is amazing. It just doesn't skimp. So if you have any, are you anywhere near Ridgefield, Connecticut, it's a high recommend. Uh, so but, wanted to get that out there. The other thing, Keith, speaking of birthdays, but wait, wait, I we gotta talk oh. about Secret Garden more. I, oh like, yeah, please Secret do. Secret Garden is one of my like seminal shows. Okay, questions, uh, comments, let's do it. No, I mean like Secret Garden. Keep talking, um, I'm gonna let the cat out. Okay, great. <laughs> that's the, is Charlie here? What's going on? Yeah, uh, no, Jason, Secret Garden is is definitely near and dear to my heart um, because it was it was one of the first shows that I did in community theater. So oh, I did uh, because uh, community theater 1998. My senior year in high school, I was an 18-year-old Archie um, and uh, spent one magical, magical summer doing what I I'm sure was a pretty bad production of Secret <laughs> Garden. Uh, but uh, it was it was definitely one of those, like, cementing my love of... I mean, I was already, like, fully committed oh, so it's to 1991 like, was the Broadway run, so Broadway I, production. I saw it much earlier than 97. I earlier was, than that. Yeah. Um, but, like... That's one of those, either talk about like chasing the experiences you had performing in that show, performing that part in that show. I've, I will forever chase the excitement and love of performing in that show. So, uh, and now I'm finally old enough to be appropriate for that role. Um, but, uh, anyway, love that show. Um, and I'm sure Jen is magnificent singing that material. So, yeah, it was, it's glorious to listen to and just just so beautiful. Uh, so happy opening to them, their sort of uh, inaugural birthday. And then, so well, I'll, I'll stay on this track. So, Keith, I had a chance last night to watch great performances, which, you know, I'm sure we've talked about on the show before. Uh, PBS, you know, they beg for money more than we do with our Patreon. And it is well deserved. They are... Some of the only Broadway and and that type of New York professional production you that I had the access to see growing up was through great sure. performances on PBS. Yeah. Full productions, some of their montage type things. Concert series. Concert series, all types of amazing things uh, on PBS in general, but also great performances specifically. And, uh, you know, I remember seeing the the Sweeney Todd tour through great per, per, uh, with oh, Andrew Lansbury. Oh, I mean, Lansbury all, the, what, all yeah. the classic Sondheim shows. I mean, I was raised uh, oh, on that. Oh, God, yeah. So they just, last week, and it's now available uh, you know, on demand or through their uh, free app, you can watch. They did a, they are celebrating 50 years of Broadway on PBS. And mm. it was hosted by Sutton Foster, National Treasure, 
And they went through each decade, starting with the 70s, when they started airing Broadway-type shows or performances on PBS, all the way through the 2010s. And standout performances, Rob McClure does a great thing. They have uh, Waitress, uh, Sarah Bareilles, and Jesse Mueller come out. Uh, just all, uh, Raul Esparza, they do numbers from San, like they do all kinds of stuff. It, it's an absolute must-watch and it's free, of course, as PBS always is, and they do a great job. I mean, if I was leveling any critique, it would be that it's clear that they recorded this on like a Sunday morning and <laughs> or a Monday morning, and everyone was a little like under-rehearsed and just kind of throwing it out there, but whatever. Uh, uh, not, well, welcome to the business. <laughs> yeah, not not even the point, but, uh, and all of it's worth watching, and and it's just, just an absolute joy. It's a, it is a, truly a celebration, but... Above all else, you know, Keith, as you get older, you lose a little bit of everything, as you, I'm sure you're aware. Uh, you know, <laughs> yes. sometimes your voice gets a little wobbly. Sometimes your legs get a little wobbly. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't do a lot of the things you can do. You can't do the splits anymore. You can't do, I mean. Yeah, yeah anymore. Yeah, that's the word for me. Yeah. Anymore. But there is a little something in the business that we call it. It's an intangible, it's a quality, mm -hmm. it's a magnetism, it's a charisma, it's something that can't be described. It makes, it's what makes someone who is excellent a star. Mm -hmm. In the middle, they're talking about John Kander, John Ebb, and for somebody Ebb, I don't, it's not John and John, uh, it's Kander yeah. and Ebb. Um, you know what, I, you we're friends, so I call him John. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's a Philly thing. Yeah. <laughs> All your lyricists are John. Cheetah Rivera mm. comes out on stage and does cabaret. Uh, All that jazz. Keith, Cheetah Rivera is 90 years old. She's 500 years old. She's Doesn't literally matter. 90 years old. 90. She comes out and stands there and sings that number. Now, they, she needs help walking out, but yep. the second that vamp hits, the shoulders go. Yeah. And she delivers a number. She can barely sing. She can barely move. But she slays all that jazz, and I think this will go down as like a seminal performance mm. to pr the pr a proof of concept that you can deliver a number a, 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 and not have to do a GD thing. Yeah. You know, she does just enough and slays the house down. You have to watch it. I'm sure you can even get it on YouTube at this point. You have to watch Cheetah Rivera's All That Jazz from the 50th anniversary. It's just, oh, we and Jen and I were like ready to weep. It's just so hot. It's so hot. She's 90 years old. And I was like, hell yes. Uh, so if you want to see what it is, Cheetah Rivera is it. There it is. Okay, so check it out. Great performances. Happy birthday. The The next thing I want to talk about quickly, Keith, is uh, on May 26th, 1997, mm -hmm. I came home from school. I drove over to Sam Goody, which was a uh -huh. store where you would buy records, and I bought Radiohead's seminal work OK Computer, which... We're not going to talk about uh, its artistic qualities. It's heralded as one of the greatest albums ever made. Absolutely, Radiohead, one of Radiohead's greatest. It is one of the last great cohesive whole records. But I'll quickly mm. talk about what it meant to me and why it was important to me. I had fallen in love with the Radiohead's previously effort, The Benz. And I was so excited for their follow-up album, and I remember listening to this record in its entirety, uh, sitting crisscross applesauce on the floor of my basement with my CD boombox in front of me. Ah, uh, yes. And feeling this ver this utter overwhelming sense of confusion because what I was listening to it resembled really nothing like the music that I had come that I had expected. Right. I, I just thought I sh wanted more. I wanted more of the thing I liked. And then I had this, and this wasn't that. And so mm. clearly I don't like this. The feeling was like, I don't like this. And I listened a little more and I listened again because it was, there was a magnetism. There's something, I, it, was, it was like a, 
an unresolved chord, a math problem that I was searching for the answer for. And as the, every time I listened to it, I never listened to one or two tracks like people do now. I always listened front to back, always. And every time I've listened to the record since then, 26 years later, I get something different out of it. Mm. My life experiences fill with it. It's, it's, it, it lyrically is so specific and obtuse that it, it means something different to me every time. Musically, it is still, it is still, doesn't make any sense to me that human beings thought of these songs and collectively put them together. It could have been written and released today. Uh, I think that it is much more cohesive and accessible than a lot of their later progress, more progressive type music that started with Kid A, the next record and on. And I think it's sort of one of those disservices that it's become so famous that people, like a lot of the Beatles efforts, that people just love to hate it or love to kind of lump it into a group of, it really is a unique and singular work and it's it's celebrating its birthday today as well. So happy birthday to OK Computer. It's affected me as an artist because I realized that art can evolve even when you think you've mastered it. It can mm. still grow even when it's it's done and released it can still grow and evolve and be something new and well, and it we talk about it all the time on on the other shows because like it is staying the same but you are changing mm -hmm. the listener is changing and and we talk all, constantly about episodes of deep space nine or whatever that i didn't respond to when i was 13 but at 43 i'm like oh god that hits really differently and that, mm -hmm. that's but that's the great part about art Art is constantly evolving, and the viewer is part of the art. The listener is part of the art, and, and that is really cool. Yeah, so uh, if you've never listened to OK Computer, or if you haven't listened to it in a while, sit down and listen to it. Do not pick out the couple of singles that were released. Listen to it front to back. Experience it, and see what it does for you. See, see, and, and just uh, happy birthday. Thank you to Radiohead for making this album that has meant so much to me over the years and will continue to. I still, the fact that you can, like, it's like a movie, you know, that you've seen a million times. There's a few of them, and I am not a, re a serial rewatcher, but the fact that like when I'm just searching for something or feeling a way that you know exactly what piece of art or what album to go to uh, because mm -hmm. you, you, you want to go through it or you need to work through something, it's it's just, man, music is something, uh, I just love it. Anyway, so happy birthday, OK Computer, my favorite album of all time. I need, Keith, to, I need to sit down and listen to it. Yeah, stick on a pair of headphones and just like set aside 47 minutes and, and go for it. All right. Uh, Keith, you said you watched Cocaine Bear. Yeah, for, the, my, for, for my birthday, I watched Cocaine Bear, which uh, is uh, hilarious. Um, and I was I started out sort of curious because, you know, I have, a, I have a bear attack screenplay that I'm trying to put out into the world. And I'm wondering like, okay, so what, like how good can you make the bear look on like medium budget CG, mm -hmm. right? Um, answer is terrific, frankly. Like I was, I was really blown away by that. Uh, but really, come across a it's it's directed by Elizabeth Banks, um, who's well, she incredibly talented. It. She directed yeah. it. She's like she is way runs way deeper and more talented than than you would think based on just like as an actress. Um, anyway, so stumbled across this movie. It is her. Uh, hilarious oh my goodness i'm so glad to hear that it's super super funny um you know utterly ridiculous i mean it, it is technically based on a true story but like not mm -hmm. um and uh you know the, the the premise is some uh some drug dealers are trying to like you know get rid of their coke so they dropped a bunch of duffels of cocaine from an airplane um and yeah. and and they do and then you know a bear stumbles across it and in real life, the bear ate some and immediately died. Uh, but in this, the, the bear just becomes a coke fiend and runs around killing a bunch of hilarious people. Um, Margot Martindale is a national treasure and is phenomenal in this. Uh, it's Ray Liotta's last movie. Hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, it's like turn off your brain, enjoy. The are there some cool, utter... are there unique kills or is it all played for laughs? Yes. I mean that it is um, like the the kid. It's not scary at all. Okay, cool. But it is terribly, pun intended, grisly. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a black bear. So that's, that's the type we have in my parents' house. I'm used to that, but, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, it is like, it is like shockingly, uh, gross and, uh, and, and ridiculous, but it's, uh, it's, it's a very satisfying little romp. So, cool. um, enjoy cocaine bear. It, it was what I needed in the moment that I was, I was like feeling like a little, uh, I don't know how I feel. Cocaine bear cheered me up. Keith, also, I guess, uh, well wishes you're having a little procedure tomorrow. Any 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 final words before you have a new bionic uh, lower pelvis? <laughs> I'm going to have a bionic belly button? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, no, I have surgery tomorrow, so we'll see. Uh, it, I mean, it should be fine. Like, it's, I'm not in any way concerned about it. I, I'm more concerned about having to wake up crazy early. That's the most traumatic part of all this to me. Is, I'll is it a, wake up. are you going to be any, any, it's an in and out kind of procedure? Yeah, it's 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 in and out just the day, but it is general anesthesia anesthesia. So it cool. will be like a, a serious like it's a real surgery, but you know, mm-hmm. in America, <laughs> they'll be out of there in like six hours. So yeah, we pre recorded Deep Space Nine. So when you see Keith, uh, his recovery wasn't that quick uh, on Wednesday. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But when you see me slur and stumble through a strange new show, that'll oh, be yeah. post. That's very true. Also, to those of you who reached out, we are zero figure review on toys yes i got the i got the alert loud and clear there's a whole other mode for him he can float on his little stand i found it thank you for pointing well, that out we missed gonna, it entirely you need to do a supplementary video yeah i should show you that. need to do yes. like a little five minute supplement and we can tag it in the original video yeah you're right um awesome well, thank you so much he is much cooler that way actually uh so we appreciate. I can't believe it. we did that. We did. Well, we were like blowing through them. We were like, let's get her, get her done. So, but you know what? That's on brand. We're, we never promised it was a thorough, in-depth review. <laughs> we never promised to be good, and I think if you're here, you know yeah. that. Uh, also, I wanted to shout out. We got some news. Uh, new, some new patrons. We're gonna get you on the slide. We're gonna say thank you. We it's on the slide. It. Oh, it it's on is. The slide up, buddy. Oh, let's do it, man. Uh, we got some patrons, y'all. Where's that thing? Yes. I want to get it out of there. There we go. Our, our welcome to our brand new Captain Wyatt Eldridge. Yes. Uh, very, very much appreciated. Another Canadian, Welcome Keith. to the team. Another Canadian. I, I mean, I'm practically Canadian myself. Yep. I grew up 45 minutes south of the border. I can sing the Canadian national anthem in its entirety, both the original version and the updated version. Well, st- stay tuned for that on the Patreon feed. We'll get Keith a full performance of the Canadian Anthem, since that's kind of what we're building here. But we appreciate you. They get all kinds of fun stuff over on the Patreon. They also get an RSS feed with all of our shows, including this one, just popping up in their feed. So thank you to everyone on this list. We hope you consider joining. It means a lot to us. It helps us get the show to uh, keep going on as Keith and I are trying to uh, supplement the time we spend but we thank you you can also help us out by giving a like and subscribe down below or you know what telling a buddy check out one of our many many shows we got some cool changes coming up moving forward to the future to kind of broaden our audience to involve more people we'll talk about that when the time comes nothing major don't worry don't freak out don't freak out it's all still here we're still here all's well uh we appreciate you keith i appreciate you listen guys girls how, whomever you may be, wherever you may be. Let me tell you this. As you get mm. older, here's something to, to, to stick in your, your pipe, your brain pipe, and smoke it. Hmm, maybe not the best choice of... Anyway, you know, I often say every week, uh, keep on doing the things you find fun. But this week, I'm going to make a little amendment. Mm. Keep on doing the things you find fun with the people mm. who you find fun. Because... A lot of times we crowd our lives with just people that stress us out. And I'm telling you this now, you don't need that. You can make some room. You can clear the deck and choose the friends and the family that make you the best you. And so that is my advice to you this week. Find them, hold on to them, tell them you appreciate them, and celebrate you, celebrate them, celebrate fun. Until next week, keep on. Keep on.